What is up everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the latest No Man's Sky video and today I'm going to be diving into 10 quick tips for new players that I think are kind of vital. These are things that the community has offered up to me in my journey as a new player. If we dive in here to my game, um, I just started playing recently. I'm very early on in the game. I haven't even logged 40 hours yet. Uh, and the streams have been great. The community has been super helpful. Um, there have been a lot of things that were overwhelming to me beyond the tutorial. Ultimately, I will come out with an ultimate beginner's guide uh, probably by the middle of the month. It's the same type of guide I do for all the games I play where I come in as a new player talking about the things from the new player's perspective. But today is the quick version where we just dive into 10 quick tips that will help you as a new player beyond the tutorial. Hopefully you enjoy. If this is your first time tuning in, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams at 11 a.m. here and on Twitch. We're going to turn the camera off now. We're going to get into the game. Hopefully you enjoy. So the first tip I can give you is going to be an add-on for your exosuit called the Personal Refiner. Now I held off on this for quite some time. Everybody kept telling me, you need to get it, you need to get it. And I was just like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. So uh, in the terms of the crafting and base building of this game, you'll get a refiner very early on in the tutorial, which will be located at your base. And you can refine the materials that you harvest at that refiner, but it's located at your base. And you can pick it up and move it with you. It's called a portable refiner but it's always going to be in your inventory and it has to be deployed. But you can get your hands on a personal refiner, which you'll get um, by spending some of the nanites that you have to purchase it on the anomaly. Um, and once you get your hands on this thing, this essentially is, it's your backpack. Like there's the graphic right there. And what you can do is you can actually come in here, have it on you, you can load it up with fuel. You can put something in it like copper, choose to begin refining. It'll start to refine that. It'll show on your backpack even, so we could actually go out here into um, the third person view and we would see that it's actually spinning away on my backpack right now as it's refining that substance. Um, that is huge in terms of being on the fly and having something with you that you can use to refine, especially for things like chromatic metal, which you're going to be using a lot of. So uh, get this as quickly as you can. Um, because it will save you a ton of travel time because you don't have to go back to your base planet anymore to use the portable refiner or you don't have to bring the portable refiner with you because you have this one on you. So you can always be refining something in this while you're on the go and then you can have your other refiner back at your home base um, and go from there. One of the things that's not explained in the game very well is the adjacent technology bonuses that you can get for having things uh, linked to other modules of the same type. So as an example, um, on every single, whether it's your multi-tool, your starship, or your extra suit, every single item that you're going to be using, or your freighter as well, I don't really have anything on the freighter yet, but everywhere you have... Um, all your tools and your ships and everything, you're going to have your basic technology that you can install, such as your analysis visor or your scanner or your mining beam. Now we're going to use the mining beam as an example because if you're going to notice right here, I have the mining beam and then over here I have a module for the mining beam and here's another module for the mining beam. And you'll notice that these share a green highlight around them and that's because they're currently uh, linked to this. So if if I had as an example this advanced mining laser, if I were to move this technology down here, it's not linked and it doesn't have a highlight around it. Same thing with this one. If I move it over here, um, uh, move technology, move over here, it loses the highlight around it because it's not linked. But if I take this and I move it up to the technology uh, module itself, and bring this up. Um, it's now linked to that mining beam as a module and of the same tech type, and it now will give an associated bonus to it. Same thing with this, that one over there as well. Now it only works for things that are adjacent. So really, the ideal scenario is if you have something like where I have my calibrated scope here. Um, I don't have any currently that are working like this. Um, I did on my other starship, but I got a new starship and it's got a weird configuration, so it's not working right now. But essentially, um, if, if you were to put something in this slot right here and then you could connect four different modules in the north, east, south, and west positions, 
you can have four things linking to that central one. So that's the long-term goal if you want to get the most bonuses out of the modules that you're going to be installing on your multi-tool, your starship, your exosuit, is that if it's the same type of technology, it does have to link. So in this case, it's a mining beam upgrade and a mining beam companion unit. It needs to be touching the mining beam itself for you to be able to get those bonuses. Um, so that's very important. Coming over here as an example, I have my hyperdrive and then just below it, I have a hyperdrive upgrade. And then over here, I have my photon cannon and just below it, um, a photon cannon upgrade. Um, and then I have a launch thruster and just below it, um, a launch thruster upgrade over here I have my pulse engine and just below it uh, a pulse engine upgrade and you'll notice that they all share a same color outline when they are linked together so that's that's a big tip uh, the game definitely didn't tell me that uh, and uh, until I probably around 30 hours into the gameplay and everybody told me on the stream like I was probably five hours in when people started telling me that so that's another big tip for new players Next up is a quick tip for inventory management, which is how to quickly and easily split stacks. Um, if you hover over a unit like this and hit the X button um, when you have it selected, uh, it's immediately going to split that stack in half. Now it does have a tool tip when you pick something up, at the, at, if you look down at the bottom there, it says quick split is the X button. I didn't notice that right away because um, I was only looking when I hovered over this. And so it was like move and stack and quick transfer. Um, but if you actually select the item, uh, you can then hit the quick split and it's an immediate way to divide it into half and now you're split in that way. Um, I find that extremely useful if you're going to be moving things around. If you want to move like half of a stack to your ship, um, you can very quickly go in here and say, I'm going to take this and then I'm going to move this over to my starship and drop this in my starship inventory. That way I've got some over here and some in my um, exosuit. Uh, I think that the, uh, the quick splitting is one of those tools where you don't have to worry about it too much in terms of picking out you know I need 122 of these just split it down the middle you're good to go and then you can stack things up when you see them like this you can move them back over to your exosuit drop them back on top of the same one and you're good to go in terms of quickly recharging items there's a couple of ways you can go about it one of course is the quick menu which you're going to learn very early on but it doesn't tell you all the cool things you can do but essentially if you hold down if you just click down on your d-pad you can recharge all your different types of equipment and you can also do lots of other things here you can you know go into third person view um look i mean look at this you can change your secondary weapon swap your multi-tool toggle your torch on and off toggle your camera view which goes between third person and first person um there's a bite beat library um, we can go back, we can go over into creatures, you can summon any creatures you've got, you can summon the vehicles you've got, if you've got more than one vehicle. Um, but essentially this is one of the quickest ways to recharge your equipment and it's going to recharge whatever is the equipment that you're currently using. So if you're running around and it's your spacesuit, it's going to recharge your spacesuit equipment. But if you jump in your ship here really quick, it now switches over. So it's going to be recharging your uh, ship-based equipment, your pulse engine, thruster, shield, and so on and so forth. But there's also another s slight tip for this, which is if you go into your um, in your starship inventory here, like if if we were down on fuel, for example, one of the ways you could do this is you could click on this, come down here and click on the tritanium, pick it up and drag it up and drop it on top. That's one way to do it. But you can also click on the pulse engine, click the tritanium that you need, and then once you've got it, um, excuse me, once you're, um, if you go over here and look at this, once you're hovering over it, it says quick charge. Hit the X button to fully charge technology with this element. So you could just quickly hit the X button, and rather than needing to drag it up on top and drop it down, you just hit the button and boom, you've recharged your pulse engine, you're good to go. Now very early on in the game, you're going to learn about the Anomaly, which is this thing that you can summon. It's essentially a space station that you can summon, you can dock at, and you can summon it into the orbit of whatever planet you're around. It's a great tool for quickly getting around because there is a teleporter up here which helps you get around. But there is a really cool tip which I didn't know about until I got pretty deep into the game, and it was during one of the live streams. So essentially, um, normally if you leave somewhere um, if we go down for an example um, uh, normally with the, the 
the anomaly, the only way to get here is to travel here via your ship. Uh, because there's no teleporter to the station, whereas space stations you can teleport to using the portal system, which is this system right here. The anomaly, however, does not let you teleport to the anomaly. You have to actually physically fly up, unless, of course, you have just traveled to a destination from the teleporter. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my um, island base as an example. We're going to warp to the island. This only works when you travel to a destination from the anomaly. Once you arrive, you can then use the the D-pad in the quick menu to quickly return to the anomaly. We're going to show that as soon as we get loaded in here. It does take a little bit sometimes, depending on where you're going. We can count down. Do, 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 do. There we go. So here we're on my base. And if I wanted to get back, if I was going up for the first time, I would need to hop in my ship and fly up there. But if you just came from the anomaly, as soon as you're done with whatever it is you're doing, click down on the D-pad to bring this up and go right one time. And you'll see a button that says return to space anomaly. And all you have to do is hit that button and you will quickly return to the space anomaly. Oops, like so. And now we're going back to the space anomaly. We'll quickly be back. And from there, we can hop in our ship, go somewhere else, use the porter, do what we need to do, pick up some more construction modules, run around, group up some players, grab some Nexus quests. You never know what you need. But that's a quick tip on how to leverage the quick return to the anomaly. Next up is the landing pad for your ship. You will get told to make one of these as part of the overall tutorial for building your first base through the game. But something I didn't realize until somebody told me this, there's two little things we want to focus on here. One is that once you've built a landing pad, it no longer costs fuel to take off in your ship. So if you want to conserve on fuel in the early parts of the game and you don't want to constantly be harvesting for fuel sources build a landing pad as quickly as possible because you'll no longer need fuel when taking off so you can just literally take off from here there's no fuel cost to do so and you can quickly get out to exploring but there's one other tip that i found really useful too which is that normally you have to manually land but when you have a landing pad it's blue because I'm too far away, but what you do is as you get closer, once the landing pad goes green and you hit your landing button, it auto lands your ship on the landing pad. So we're going to go ahead. It's going to go green here in a second. We can hit the landing button. It's now initiating the landing sequence and it's going to automatically put us on the pad and flip us around so that we have a great view out from where the landing pad is focused here on my paradise planet quick commercial break everyone to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time really appreciate the support all you got to do is join as a member you get access to private videos you can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see and beyond that don't forget we're multi-streaming over on twitch now so you can support over there as well thanks so much to everybody let's get back to the video at hand when it comes to harvesting resources, this is one of the main things you're going to be doing in the game. Is You're going to be coming out into the game world and you're going to be finding rocks and trees and things that you harvest because these give you resources. Now, if it's your first time on a destination, um, pretty much everything you see is going to be uh, only giving you one resource because it's undiscovered and unscanned. But when you start scanning items, this is what you quickly find is that items will give two different resources a primary resource and a secondary resource so when you're looking for resources in any given environment and it's not at all of them some of them like this bush they're only going to give one thing um, but other things will give two so when you're running around you're going to want to scan everything to make sure that you're getting the absolute maximum amount of resources possible when you're harvesting obviously there are other things you could do like putting mods on your multi-tools so that you can get a greater yield but the big thing is making sure that you're getting more than one resource at all times if you possibly can and again not every single resource is going to give you two different things but many of them will but you have to scan them first so just make sure when you see something scan something 
you know, hover over it, hit go into the scan mode, scan it, get your get your item scanned, and then you'll have everything you need to get the most out of your harvesting on planets. If you ever find yourself getting confused on where to find a specific resource, one of the quick tips that you can do to help you find things is you can go in here to your catalog and guide, and you can go into the materials and items section, and you can look for the various things that you want to find. If they happen to be on your planet, it will tell you. If they're not on your planet, it will also tell you. Um, so let's say I want to find something like cobalt. Uh, there's a button there where it says locate substance. I would hit that, locate the substance, and then I would bring up my scanner. And what you're going to notice is on the middle of my scanner, it's showing me a, a blue triangle and it's pointing to the right and it's telling me to go in this direction. So I'm going to move the icon over here and notice that it's already highlighting a cobalt deposit off there in the distance. So if there's something on the planet that you can actually harvest, um, which is of that resource type, it will quickly show you. If it's not on the planet, it will also it will say something different. Um, but we could look for like, for example, um, let's look for fuel and utilities. Now let's look for raw materials. Let's look for copper. Um, it says large, locate large copper deposits with analysis visor. Um, Oh, it does show copper deposit over in that di direction. So this is a quick and easy way to find things. Um, if you are finding yourself uh, confused with where to find a particular resource. Now, not all of them are going to be as quickly labeled as that one uh, because it is going to depend on whether or not it's on the planet or not. And some things like chromatic metal, um, you know, some of these you're going to be harvesting and it'll tell you the stellar metals are copper, cadmium, emerald, and indium and you just need to place one of those into um, a refiner to get those um, but it can also show you if there's a copper, cadmium, emerald, or indium deposit on the planet it will point you in that direction again using this handy tool around the center of your visor for analysis mode it'll quickly ping you over to that so if in doubt Go in here, look for buildings and materials. You could look for exotic goods. We could look up something like, uh, uh, oh, I don't know where it is. Uh, I'm trying to find it really quick. There's one called a humming sack, and I don't remember if I can find it in here quickly and easily, but you can track the humming sacks, and those will allow you to um, find caves, as an example, um, because they're always underground, and I don't remember where they're located in here. But there's lots of different ways to find things, so just... Don't be, hes don't be afraid to go in here and look for things like living pearls. Um, as an example, n item is never crafted. It'll tell you if it's something you can search for. So exotic goods, no. Um, things like dihydrogen jelly, you can pen, aronium, fuel and utilities. We can go in here and look for things, antimatter or things that are crafted. Um, and it'll tell you, like if we picked creature pellets... Um, use A to craft an empty inventory slots. So there's lots of different ways you can use this to find the things you need. Just remember that anytime you're in doubt, click on it, and then go in here and you can find things and go from there. Now when it comes to building things, if you're going to get into base building, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the build menu placing parts to build your various different bases. There's also a button here that says edit placed parts if you wanted to go in there as well. The big thing is, is anytime you're in the build menu, the build menu is going to look like this. So even if we were to place something as simple as a small ally panel, you're going to get the build uh, menu up above and you're going to have a whole bunch of commands. The big thing to remember is that when you're in the default, you're running around with the thing in front of you, with whatever it is you're trying to place is going to be in in front of you on the screen and you're going to be running around with it. This could be dangerous to your health if you're trying to place something at the edge of a cliff as right here because you'll end up falling off. It is vitally important that you use the tap the camera toggle which you'll notice on the top it shows you exactly how to toggle it in this case I'm on the Xbox controller you hit LS and it's going to toggle you out so that you can now move your character move the object around move the camera around and get better placement on this while your character remains in place which is how I placed all of these stairs um, and platforms over here on the edge because I didn't want to fall off so you just go into this mode and now you can quickly snap to the edges and put this thing where you want and you could just manipulate the camera to move up and down get the POV that you want so that you can place these as needed this camera view is extremely important 
hand in hand with the placement of the objects in the build camera mode is also going to be the rotation axes which is something that is more tied to the free placement mode so right now we're in we're using um, snapping so everything is snapping two edges right here so if we want to go into free placement which we can we can hit the free placement and now we can move this object around wherever we want um, and uh, we could place it however we want depending on how we're moving the camera but we can also adjust the axes so in this case um, like right now we could just rotate it on this axis but if we want to cycle the axes we can click down on the right stick and it's going to show me that we're now rotating on this axis and if we click that right stick again we're now rotating on this axis if we right stick again we're now on this axis so this gives you an easy way to switch between the various axes that you want to play around with in free mode and then if you find that you know you've got it where you want you can then go place stuff in here and play around with it otherwise you can go back to the snapping mode and boom 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 it's right here so that you can quickly snap to uh, but for placement of objects in weird weird angles or locations where it might not be snapping properly just go into free mode and then find the axes that you want and then rotate it around accordingly and you can then place things as you desire so there you have it everybody those are the 10 quick tips that i find the most useful for my journey as a new player hopefully you find them useful as well and they can help you explore beyond the stars and beyond the tutorial that the game starts you off with there's a lot of stuff to learn in this game like i said i'm barely not even 40 hours in yet and i'm still learning something new like every time we stream i learn like five new things i've probably got a list of like 75 things now that people have told me that i'm like oh wow that's awesome so it's a big game there's a lot to cover Hopefully you're enjoying it. Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. Daily streams here and on Twitch at 11 a.m. Central. Don't forget the Discord, the Patreon, and all the socials. We'll see you in the next one.